Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the new save file. We're going to be jumping in today doing something a little bit different because unfortunately I recorded this video the other day and it's a really, really good run where a kind of a lot of important things happen and unfortunately my mic completely failed me and it kept cutting in and out and it's basically really, really hard to listen to. So I'm going to do a voiceover because I feel like this run needs to hit YouTube. A lot of important stuff happens. So anyways, I decided to play as Bethany and try to go for an unlock on Tainted Bethany. Uh, but yeah, essentially, I, I, I'm, I'm speaking about it in uh, tomorrow's episode because I've already recorded that now. But my microphone kind of did a weird thing where it, it, it just decided to get a lot quieter than it normally would be. And therefore, it now, uh, it, like, it... My noise gate, which normally cuts out my background sound, was instead cutting out my actual voice, meaning that you could only hear half the things I was saying. So I've had to tweak my mic settings in order to fix that. Hopefully this sounds okay to you guys. I've tweaked it to the best of my ability. But we managed to get Mum's pad here, which um, for Book of Virtues on the first floor, of course, really, really good because we just get a lot of extra wisps. And the ability to generate wisps, it's actually not too bad. Like, they're a little bit weaker than the base Book of Virtue ones, but they um, they have the ability to fire fear shot and obviously being a two-room charge, it's fairly easy to generate. Obviously, the item itself, the fear, it's not particularly useful, but in certain rooms, it definitely did help out. Like, rooms like this, when there's a lot of enemies, I mean, this room was just absolutely full of enemies, but it kind of helped out, and I was able to uh, build quite an army of wisps that really helped out. Um, but yeah, as for the question of the day today, I can't remember what the original question of the day was, I'll be honest. Um, so I'm going to have to try and think of a new one on the spot here. Um, hmm. What's your least favorite enemy in a video game? I think mine's going to have to be the, um, the little avid, what the hell are they called? The little, uh, tri-shooter things from Hollow Knight. Anyone that's played the game knows exactly what I'm talking about. I can't remember what they're called now. Uh, but them things, goddamn, they're so annoying. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to hear what, what for you guys it is, if it's an Isaac enemy or anything from any other game. Uh, but yeah, like, it's it's a bit weird doing a post commentary. I realise for you guys this isn't the regular uh, video. But like I said, this, this video, you'll see when we get over to it, um, you'll sort of get an inkling. Of, of what's happening in this run when we get when we get uh, around to it. It might even be in the title of this video. I have no idea so far. Um, I'll see when I come around to uploading it, I guess. But it was one of those videos. I, honestly, you, you guys can't believe how frustrated and angry I was that the, that the voice, like the audio recording on this messed up. I was so, so, so angry. Like, my mic has done this before where... Um, it randomly just decides to turn itself down. Normally, it's usually because, like, Teams or another app has turned it down without my permission, which is really annoying. But I found out a way to stop that from happening, and it hadn't happened for a really long time, so I was really happy. But then, yeah, um, I recorded three videos um, yesterday, which included this one. And then I watched one of them back and was like, whoa, my mic's really quiet. And then I listened a little more and realized my voice was cutting in and out a lot to the point where it was like not very audible and kind of hard to listen to and it meant that three whole videos three whole videos were completely useless had to bin them off scrap them um and i've still not been able to fix the mic like right now what i've what i've ended up doing is um i had like specific settings on my mic that i was really happy with um, and i've just had to change all my settings really to boost my voice audio via um, upping the gain and changing my noise gate to allow for my voice to come through a bit clearer. I mean, like I said, hopefully for you guys, it doesn't make really much or any difference at all in terms of the quality of my voice. And you can let me know if you can hear the quality difference at all. I'd actually be quite happy if you guys would let me know if you can tell any difference. I think the quality is reasonable right now, but still something isn't working as it should be. And so my voice it, um, is having to be boosted a lot more than normal. I got these weird batteries. If anyone knows what these do, let me know. Like, that one gave me a double charge. So I'm guessing the idea is that it can, like, decharge you or double charge you. Um, and it's kind of like a cursed penny in a way. I ended up finding, like, a blessed battery later on as well, and I couldn't figure out what that did either. Um, it's not entirely clear to me, so... But yeah, we ended up kind of exploring around the first floor quite a bit. Obviously, we got Mum's underwear there, which just wasn't very useful. But we checked out the cash room, got a few extra pennies. Um, and I'm pretty committed to doing a beast run in this run, of course. I really wanted to unlock Tainted Bethany here. 
Um, we get a pretty unfortunate dice room here that re-rolls all the things in the room, but I need bombs to get to those sacks anyways. And sacks are probably better than anything that they could re-roll into either way, so not particularly good. But as you can see, now with this sort of army of wisps we've generated, we've got quite a lot going. There's quite a lot of fear shot going on, but also the actual damage output of the wisps is, is pretty hefty. I think really the only difference in terms of the uh, wisps themselves between the, the default ones is the fact they have fear shot and they take like one less shot to kill. But the damage they put out and like the shot speed and everything all seems pretty identical. Now here, this was real, I remember this room. I was like, oh, I have to go and uh, unlock all of these and I realized, no. My wisps have spectral. I don't have to do any of this shit. <laughs> I can bypass all of this. So, um, early on, it's really just like regular Isaac. We're just uh, running through the rooms, seeing what we can do. And I, I was honestly kind of like reevaluating fear as as a as a modifier in terms of how useful it can be. Because I think one of the biggest downsides of Mum's pad isn't the fact that it's fear. Fear is not super useful, but it's like not terrible. But the reason it's quality zero is kind of the same reason with like the hourglass. It's just you get such a low duration of fear. Like it just it just doesn't last anywhere near long enough to be useful. It's like maybe three or four seconds as you just saw there and it's just it doesn't really do much to help you out. Um, it, it kind of it kind of is a big shame in that regard. But one great thing here, um, also X-ray vision is just a fantastic item here for us. Um, one one great thing here is obviously I can use soul hearts to charge up, which means I can sort of extend the duration in certain rooms. Uh, we get an ace of diamonds here. I I definitely take that with me. I don't remember when, and I think um, I go through and take all these pills because. This pill that I'm about to take over here, if I remember correctly, is a health up. Spoiler alert. There you go, yeah. So I'm like, ooh. Okay, as soon as I get, like, one good pill, my brain's like, okay, from now on, all pills are good. Um, <laughs> there's gonna be a few things that I do in this run that don't make a lot of sense with, like, post-commentary, but in the moment I did. Like, there's one moment, I think it's next floor, where I spend a really really long time looking for a trinket that doesn't even exist. Like, I I swore that one dropped and it didn't. And I spend a really long time looking for it. I, like, go back and forth between a bunch of different rooms and I just can't find it. And it's because I don't think it ever existed. <laughs> and, uh, it just... It's kind of funny to, like, watch back my own video and be able to see some of the really dumb mistakes that I made. But as you'll see here, I think I end up using Mum's Pad more than once because I've got the extra charges. Um, or do I? Yeah, maybe not. But, as you can see, the Wisps survive a decent amount here. I managed to, like, kind of dodge around them. I was certainly considering just taking the Plum Flute, but I thought with the two-room charge of the active we had, it was pretty good. And, of course, here we get our first Angel deal. Um, we unfortunately get... Oh, there's the trinkets I was looking for. But, yeah, uh, we, we get two Revive items, um, which was slightly annoying because I wasn't really planning on reviving. But the Punishment Grave thing is actually kind of interesting because... With the grave, um, it allows you to revive with four hearts, and if you've never taken a devil deal, you get an angel item when you revive. So it was a pretty actually good idea to grab this. Not that I was planning on dying, because I, I like I currently had uh, four lives, so I was like, oh, maybe I'll just kill myself this floor. But then things sort of change a little bit over the course of the rest of this floor, and it means that killing myself isn't actually the best way forward anymore. Um, I think it's because of these pills that I think I think I get another health up pill and at that point It's like it'd be a little bit of a waste of HP uh, get, Oh, there you go. I, that's it. I get a verp into a HP up, which is awesome Explosive diarrhea doesn't really help especially it's spawning goddamn spiders on me um, That scared the hell out of me. That's a pill that fakes your death and confuses all the enemies in the room I was so confused when that happened. I was like, did I just take a pill that killed me? I also managed to get this little nightmare familiar dude, which is quite nice to have alongside um, the shots from our wisps. And then unfortunately we kind of whiff here with our uh, with our cash room. Unfortunately there's nothing in there for us. But we can keep moving on, keep moving forward. Um, and yeah, this this room here, I, I, I whiff it so hard. I put the bomb down to get the sack. And then I was like, oh, I'll re-roll the other sack. And then I accidentally walk straight into the actual dice and re-roll it before I even get the bomb off. It's just, it was so, do it was so goddamn stupid. So goddamn stupid. But we get ourselves some HP and we move down to the next floor. Um, what the hell am I doing now? Is this where I go and look? 
This might be where I go and look for the trinkets, you know. Yes, it is. So I was like, oh, I need to leave a cracked key on the floor. And I just, I was like wondering where the hell this trinket was. Turns out now I've realized it was in the angel deal. And there was um there was there was the the the, the long worm that gives you the range up in the angel deal, but I swore in this moment that it was somewhere on this floor. I was so convinced I was going back and forward, and I'm like, item room there? No, must have been on the last floor. I can't remember where it is. And turns out, yeah, it was just in the angel deal. You fool, you fool. Yeah, I was I was perplexed about where the hell this thing had gone. Like you see, I'm just checking every single room. But these are like sort of the weird. Like, it's, it's, it's definitely funny to, like, do this post-commentary, because these are the sort of, like, weird mistakes that you guys in the comments point out all the time. Of, like, how did you not realise you blew up the donation machine already? How did you not realise you left this item? How did you not realise this? And it's, like, when you're, like, lost in the source of actually recording an episode, when you're, like, thinking about commentating as well as playing the game, it's, it's surprisingly easy to forget really, really obvious things that might have even just happened. Um, this is a clear example of that, like, I end up, um, bombing this poop here to get this golden chest. It's a little bit pricey to, to do a bomb and a key to open this, especially when I don't have a lot of bombs. But it ended up kind of paying off because we got quite a lot of money out of it. Um, and I kind of spoke about at the start of this episode that there's an item in the shop that I was really looking for called the Flechette, which is from the Something Wicked mod. Um, which basically makes it so that wisps do double damage and have double HP. It's like the best item you can get as Bethany. It's so damn good. And it's a shop item as well. Because on most runs, it's kind of useless. But on Bethany, it's really, really strong. Um, so I was kind of like hoping to get that money so that I could check the shops and hopefully get the item. Um, checking for it constantly. And then I found this interesting secret room. It's one of these machines that allows me to use the Book of Revelations, but it was free. So I could just use it as many times as I wanted until it blew up. I got I got four soul hearts out of it. And then here's one of these holy batteries, which I couldn't really figure out what it did. I also got a fool's gold rock there, which is not too bad. But yeah, I picked it up and it it just seemed to regularly charge my active. It didn't do anything else. I'm, I'm not sure if it like grants a wisp when you use it or something like that. I, I really don't know. I'm not entirely sure. But you can see like runes like this... Actually, the fear kind of comes into play as being a, a pretty useful thing to have. We've got to the point now we've got a second a second set of wisps, so we just go straight for the boss fight, and unfortunately, of course, we get Cube of Meat. Cube of Meat just never leaves me alone. It's kind of like the eternal, D the eternal D10 of boss fights. I just can't get away from Cube of Meat. It's just, it is quite literally eternal. It's always there. It's always haunting me. Um... And we do get perfection. Obviously, this means that now we can leave our trinket on the floor for our uh, cracked key, which is really nice. And yeah, yeah. At this point, I was really happy. Now, one thing you will notice that I didn't notice for a little while here is look at that fire rate. I lost a lot of fire rate in taking Sacred Heart there because I always forget it's a tears down. Um, and I go down to 1.97. And honestly, without having... Like, obviously, Sacred Heart is normally like a one-run item. Without my Wisps, I genuinely think this would have been a much harder run because the fire rate is so low. And, like, my damage is reasonably high, but it's not crazy. Um, obviously, the Herming helps a lot, but losing that fire rate at 1.97 is incredibly low. Um, and it was it was kind of causing some issues. One good thing, though, is now that we have Perfection, we, we have, like, a pretty reliable path to keeping a Wisp, um, like, a, a good suite of Wisps to keep us safe, which meant that I, like... Perfection was reasonably safe. I can't remember how long I ended up keeping Perfection for, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, I definitely lost it at some point, but I don't remember where. But I also have an Eternal Heart to protect here, but that's another reason that I was, like, okay with just taking the Eternal Heart. Because normally, as Bethany, it's a bit of a risk whether you'd lose it if you take it early. Um, oh yeah, I mean, I ended up splitting these guys apart and using the Ace of Diamonds here. And I ended up getting a dime out of it as well, which is pretty nice. Um... But yeah, uh, normally the Sacred Heart, I'd be feeling a little unsafe. But honestly, with this many Wisps, it was a little more, um, a little more okay. And I think this is, this, this shop, we get a pretty important item for the run, or a pretty useful item for the run, should I say. Um, yes, I think it's this one. We go for a few rerolls, trying to get the, 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 trying to get the Flechette, as I mentioned before. That's kind of our main goal here, or like Humbling Bundle or anything like that. 
um, that would be good. Glowing Hourglass is interesting, but definitely was more inclined to take an active that could generate more Wisps, which we have right now. Mold and Clear, I was, I was really tempted by this, because obviously it lets us dupe items and that would be incredibly useful. But it's one use per floor and it would only grant me a regular Wisp. It didn't have any specific Wisp interaction. And so I was more inclined to just take the Mom's Pads. And I checked our item room here to see if our Molding Clay would be useful. Unfortunately, it wasn't. It was just, it hurts. Which is actually nice considering the fire rate issues we currently have. But there you go. I keep re-rolling and we get 9 Volt. Which does two things for us. One... Now our mum's pad is a one room charge, which means more wisps and more fear. But more importantly, now when I use soul hearts to charge my mum's pad, instead of using two soul heart charges, it only uses one. So it meant that I was getting double the value out of all the soul hearts I was picking up, which was actually pretty darn good. That made quite a big difference um, in how much I could use my pad like as a like extra. Because I'd really not been using the soul heart charges at all. Um, and re realistically, I only really needed, I don't know why I used that there, but realistically, I only really needed to use it, um, once a room, but on bosses, it meant, I, it meant I could use it a little more if I wanted to keep them feared. I think I ended up using it more than once on this room, but it's, it's mainly just so that I can generate even more wisps, especially if I, like, crash into an enemy and lose a bunch at one time. Um, it means that I can sort of quickly regen, so 9 volt there is, like, just generally a very good item, but just because of the way that it replenishes your charge, it, gi it gives you one charge back after having used your active, which has a really positive interaction with the soul heart charge, which I actually didn't notice for a little while here on the run, but later down the line I do, and you can see at the minute, our health is absolutely booming right now, we're in a really, really good spot for HP, and realistically, the only thing we're kind of looking for right now is, um, we're looking for that lovely lovely tears up which um is unfortunately a little hard to find on purpose we just kind of have to get luck of the draw but there you go we get one of these pills again and i kind of check what it does this time around and see that it actually just triggers a fake death because yeah last time it just confused me so damn much i was like what the hell is this but yeah now we can use our active a lot more i think i do get a little bit lazy with it like near the end of the run where i just kind of forget to use it every room but ma mainly kind of one of the things I was saying during the run is one of the sort of downsides to it is that animation that just played there. It kind of, it means that you, like each run takes two or three seconds longer than it should because it's got to play out that stupid animation. Uh, and I, I think there is mods that remove all of those. And I know that obviously they removed a few of their animations with Repentance. Um, like, like, I don't know if anyone remembers, but Blackhearts actually used to have that animation whenever they depleted. A black heart used to do that little animation um, and then do the damage, which was just silly. Because, like, yeah, it's a heart. There's no need. But, yeah, we saw there we got a luck penny. Uh, of course, right now we're at 13 luck because of our uh, perfection. But it's nice to have the luck uh, just there as plus three luck for when we do lose perfection eventually. Obviously, at the minute, it's not looking like we're going to lose it anytime soon. But you can never really rely on keeping perfection forever. I mean, unless you're playing uh, as the Lost or... Um, tainted loss then it's a little more likely that you're going to keep it around but as this character we don't get so lucky with that um but the wisps like i said do help an absolute ton one thing i was definitely missing as well on this run i could definitely feel sort of the pain point is um why did i not blow up that tinted rock there did i miss that tinted rock but here here is where things get rather interesting now we don't lose perfection by being hit but we do get Missing Poster. Now, as all of you know, we've been looking for Missing Poster for a little while now. Because if we die on a Sacrifice Room while holding this, we respawn as the Lost and unlock the Lost. So, I was, um... I was very, very, uh, excited to see this. And I, I decided that I was going to leave Perfection. We also got the coupon here, but I actually, surprisingly, was happier with our active because we're not going to devil deals so it's not as valuable and we already have the money to make shops worthwhile so i thought hey her we don't really need it let's just stick with what we've got it's kind of working um just just for having the protection of the wisps and having the extra fear it's quite nice so i stuck with that and yeah now we have missing poster so at this point it was kind of a race to try and find a sack room so at the minute as you can see i'm going back through all the rooms i'd previously been to just seeing if i could find a sacrifice room 
Um, and luckily, obviously, we already have um, the Holy Mantle as uh, the Lost Unlocked. So when we respawn as the Lost, we're not in a complete shit show. We're not in a tainted Lost situation. We do actually have the ability in here. I, I actually see that there was a spider bite for sale and a green key. So for just one key, I was able to reveal spider bite and unlock it, which I was really happy about because obviously it's a pretty good item. Pairs quite well with the stuff we've got going on. Another tier effect to add to the uh, to add to the roster. Um, and now yeah, it was it was all about all about trying to find a sack room, and so. We kind of had to give up the idea of going to the beast here, especially, obviously, to unlock Tainted Bethany. That's just out of the cards now. Um, but, obviously, I was going to have to, like, go to the womb and further to make sure that I got um, got a sack room at this point. Uh, to, to Just so that I can make sure to get that lost unlock. And potentially get, like, a cathedral, uh, the chest mark as the lost. Because, obviously, you do respawn as him with Holy Mantle, and this is a pretty good run, so the viability of actually being able to get a completion mark as the Lost on the same run that we unlock him was certainly there, and I was trying to I was trying to make that a reality, um, but like I said, it did mean that uh, we, we might have to go past Mum to make that happen, um, and we certainly had to give up on the idea of unlocking Tainted Bethany, which was a shame, but honestly, when this opportunity comes around, I, I really don't feel too bad about taking it, Especially on a run that's got this like, amount of power. Especially considering if we respawn as the Lost, um, I, I was pretty sure that we'd keep Book of Virtues. Even though it's a character starting item, like we'd still just start with it, which is obviously really, really nice. Um, we get the Chastity Belt, which someone actually explained to me. You don't ever lose damage with this, meaning that it's actually always going to be some level of damage up, even if you have a lot of keys. Uh, so that's really, really nice to know. Obviously, the less keys you have, the better. But I th I'd always felt a little bit crappy about that item because I kind of thought that if you had more than five keys, you'd be losing damage. But that is not the case, which makes me, yeah, way more inclined to use this thing. And here we get another chance to go for the flushette, of course. So we'll take a look in the shop and see. But we just get a greed fight. But on the other hand, we get a hell of a lot of money. Hell of a lot of money out of this. And this is kind of why I didn't need the coupon. And here we see a golden key from this chest of the item, which just looks very strange. It's more green than gold. But yeah, now we've kind of like found our rhythm. We're just kind of pushing forward. And I use fear a few times to generate a few more wisps here, as you can see. I think that was the point in which I realized it was only using one soul heart charge per. And I was like, oh, I can use this a lot more than I thought I could. Which isn't super useful for the room itself, but it's super useful for generating extra wisps. And obviously, all it takes is one kamikaze enemy to run into you to uh, to end up losing more wisps than you'd like. We get a good bomb off there, and I think I just about kill this guy before he hits me. Yeah, there you go. I do, did lose a wisp to him, but that's that's what I mean by the kamikaze enemies. And unfortunately, here, lovely, we just get the goddamn PJs. Like. As any other character, I think PJs are such a great item to grab. But as this guy, unfortunately, it's just it's just not useful at all to grab PJs. And those guys, of course, take away some wisps. So I do use the PJs here to grab myself those wisps back. And in, in that case, it is useful. But overall, not the best. We get Pocket Bible here, but of course, our missing page is... Uh, Missing page, is it missing page? Lost post, or whatever it's called, is obviously way, way more important to us at this stage. Obviously, it doesn't do anything for us now, but I, I'm so afraid to like put it down for the floor or whatever that I, I feel like I'd just forget it was there. But I think at this stage, we are on a, we are on Necro two, right? Are we on an Excel floor? We might be on an Excel floor. I can't remember. I didn't see the, uh, the floor when I, when I jumped down to it. My bad, my bad. A yeah, book of sin here, kind of an interesting one because it can spawn so many types of wisps. But it says explosives effects are likely in the description there, and I was like, eh, uh, I don't really know about the safety of that. But what I do do is take it for a bookworm, of course, and then just use it a bunch of times to get some wisps out of it and some consumables. Um, see what I can get. And we got a few things. We ended up getting uh, one little wisp that does some little explosive shots. Uh, which is a little scary, but it does end up doing some extra damage for us. And it's not particularly easy for that thing to hurt us. We kind of got to be playing 
rather incorrectly for that to end up hurting us. And there, there's, there's me playing rather incorrectly. I just decide, hey, what if I walked directly on top of these spikes? I don't know why I did it, but I most certainly did. Um, certainly a bit of a, a blunder on my behalf. But we come, come across this sort of slightly hellish room of just an alarming amount of blood. <laughs> but luckily with the herming and the spectral from our wisps, it's actually not that bad, even with all the rocks about. Secret room. What does secret room contain here? We didn't get any secret room items. We did manage to get a puzzle piece, which is just puzzle you. Piece. You, you, you are to know. I can find you. Okay, so no, this is not, this is not the mum floor. I thought it was. But of course, we are still going to look around the floor for a potential sack room and copper bomb there. Screws me. I actually kind of got a bit claustrophobic in this fight here because... Like I said, my fire rate just really isn't very good. So I actually, my da my damage output wasn't really that high. And for the first time ever fighting this boss, I actually had multiple waves of worms on screen at once, which I'd, I'd never actually had before. So certainly a little bit of extra fear. Sadly, I throw out a bomb a little early here, but we get this guy deaded after losing quite a few wisps, which is a real shame. But we get through it, and we just have to take this guy out now. And we get ourselves the locked memories, which is um, rather nice for trying to find ourselves the uh, the red room. Unfortunately, this one here does not pay out. But we've got two other chances to find that red room, which I think is pretty reasonable. I actually think it's a really, really interesting item. It doesn't just sh outright show you or give you access to the red room, but it does give you that opportunity on at least two floors. On at least two floors to get a red room. And I think that's really, really cool as a boss and shop item. Because that's the, the pools I've seen it show up in so far. So I see this one red room down here and think, let's just go for it. I'm not super confident in where the um, the red room might be. But I think, good a chance as any. Give it a go, why not? Um, and see if we see if we get success. These spiders are really scaring me about destroying my wisps. So I was trying to stay away from here. And I check it out. And luckily, I am correct in my assumption. And I managed to get myself access to the red room, um, which is pretty nice. And of, of course, there's quite a lot of potentially good items in the red rooms. Um, but we unfortunately just get premature detonation, which essentially means that explosive enemies are weakened and they will die on their own, which in itself isn't actually that bad. And you get plus five bombs. I really didn't mind getting this at all. It's just not like of all the red items you can get. It's not one of the sort of higher up ones. But then again... There's plenty of red items that aren't that good. That's kind of the nature of the red rooms. Um, it's, it's, I actually so much prefer, like, so many people sort of complained when Ultra Secret Rooms got changed from having angel items in them to having their own red pool. While I understand that people obviously liked the idea of being able to get more angel items and in general they were more powerful and, like, better if you could gain access to those red rooms, I absolutely loved the fact that they changed it over to the red item pool. It's, it's just... There isn't really an item pool like it in Isaac. It's pretty quirky. It isn't based on, like, the boss bosses like stat and health. Treasure is all the, like, passives and, like, random stuff. Um, curse is, like, cursed items. It's, like, it's not really themed. It's just... Well, it is themed, but it's, like, it's not really, like, a type of item. It's just, like, a random collection of items that happen to be the color red. And I really like that. It's, it's very sort of quirky for an item pool to have that as an attribute. And... There's actually a mod in the workshop that does something similar, which is unfortunately a little bit too specific to be something you come across, um, I wouldn't even say regularly, but you, you, you're you not even going to come across it rarely. It's extremely rare. Someone made um, a, a, a unique item pool for Pandora's box with the strange key. For those of you who don't know, if you get the trinket strange key, it's like a little blue key, and you get Pandora's box, it will open Pandora's box and give you a few items. Uh, and before, they just used to be random items. But someone made a mod um, that made it so that they actually have a, uh, an entirely unique item pool of blue-themed items. So you just get blue items. Um, which, again, it's, it's, it's a really it's just, just sort of fun and unique idea. Um, that, like, it's pretty cool to play on. It's just unfortunate that, like, I, I, I'd have to say that... If, if there was an achievement in Isaac for opening Pandora's box with the strange key, I would say it would be one of the least gotten achievements in the entire game. Genuinely, I think it'd be one of the rarest achievements. Because I've never had that happen. 
and I've never even seen the same, like, those two things on the same run, I don't think. Not that I know of. Um, it's just so unlikely to get those two things. It's one of those mods that it's like, it's a really cool mod, but especially when you're trying to save FPS and, like, prevent mod bloat, do you really want to, um, do you really want to, like, try, uh, getting, like, try doing more with mods, like, adding more mods when it's a mod that's gonna so rarely affect your game. It's one of the biggest shames of Isaac modding, in my opinion, is that because the API is the way that it is, and, like, lag is the way that it is, it's so, like, there's so many mods that are so situational and small and, like, don't do much that I'd love to keep enabled all the time, but there's just... You just can't because they add to your mod bloat and like your save file bloat and create more lag. And it's stuff that's so like situational that you're very rarely going to come across. Like all the mods that I keep are uh, ones that I'm going to be like seeing uh, come into play on a regular basis. Like for example here we have a tainted treasure room. That's something that we come across on a fairly regular basis. Unfortunately here we do... Um, we do go in here and we get the tainted version of the x-ray glasses, which improves the layout and rewards of secret rooms, super secret rooms, which is interesting, but personally with x-ray glasses being guaranteed to find a secret room and be able to enter it for free, I think that's a little better. I also figured out here, these little ghosty buddies, they actually close their heads again after hitting them if you fear them. Um, so I was able to like keep that guy at bay by constantly hitting him with random fear shots, which is pretty interesting. Some unique, uh, unique thing with that guy that I didn't know about. Obviously, it's pretty situational, but it's it's still interesting to know regardless. Um, we grab our pennies here, and we head off. But we're now on mother's floor, of course. We're now on mother's floor, and we will go through and try and see if we can find a sack room before we leave. But otherwise, we uh, will be heading over to the womb to uh, try and find sack rooms. Because obviously, on the womb and fervor, we're definitely going to end up finding a sack room at some point. Um, they tend to show up once every two to three floors, realistically. Um, it's not always guaranteed with that, but it seems fairly regular that that's the case. Um, and so we're just kind of waiting to see one. I got really confused by this enemy because I didn't realize I could just kill him. So I'm like, open these blocks. And I'm like, wait a minute. I don't need you to open these blocks. I can just kill you. And he does his little, oh. which I, I still, it's still one of my favorite sounds in all of modded Isaac. We finally find our full card here, which I do grab just in case. Um, Like, I, 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 don't, I don't remember why particularly I grabbed it at this point. Um. But it's a free card at, at, at the end of the day. It's like not bad to grab it. So I grabbed the full card there. And we keep on making our way around. And yeah, you can just see that the, the fee has been pretty damn good. Like as, as all, for like all the items you can get to start with as Tainted Bethany in terms of your actives. First floor. This is probably like one of the ones that I would say is probably quite underrated for Bethany. I bet not a lot of people know how good Mum's Pad is with her. Because of it, as every other character, it's one of those items that you kind of just go, ugh, this again, this thing. Uh, and we do get a Forget Me Now here, which is honestly mighty tempting. Mighty tempting. Because obviously that's another attempt at a sack room, another potential angel deal. That guy just committed suicide, lovely. Uh, the only problem would be that we then have no active. And... As, as surprising as it may be, I really do not want to lose Mum's pad at this point. So the Forget Me Now is one of those things that I was a little like, maybe we should take it, maybe we shouldn't. But then, of course, we get ourselves a sack room here. Um, very lovely. I decide to carry on with the rest of the floor first and come back to the sack room. Um, and oh, there's our puzzle piece and we get Abel. Wow. First time I've had Abel in a really, really long time. But god damn, is he just an absolute piece of trash. We unfortunately come in this room here, which is not a good idea. Because these enemies just dash at you. And if I don't kill them in time, they're basically going to eat up my wisp charges. And that they certainly do. That they certainly do. So now, uh, because I actually have a full card at this point, I'm going to beeline it over to um, to the boss. Do, mums, do the mum fight first and then full card back and take the sack room while we can. 
This room I was just annoyed with. I feared these guys before they were able to throw their heads, which is normally what would release them, which kind of broke the room a little bit, or at least made it take a lot longer than it should, so I kind of had to just bomb through and uh, take the L on that one. And then this room was just kind of... Like, look at it. It's crazy. Look how many fat boys there is in here. This is like the, the line at McDonald's. My God. There's so many fat boys. I say that as I am one of the fat boys that's part of that line. I'm allowed to say it. Now, I'm not that fat anymore. I used to be. I've, 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 I've slimmed down a bit. But we get another one of these rooms, look. But this time, it costs us. I accidentally do walk into it briefly, but this time it costs us. We'll check our uh, thingy again for Flechette. Unfortunately not. We do get a charge baby in the top right there. Do I notice this tinted rock? I don't even notice the tinted rock. You goose. The turtle melon is goose. New headline. Turtle melon is goose. How did I miss that? But anyways, we go for our boss here. Just unfortunately still with our low, low fire rate. Um, the fight isn't particularly quick. You can really see how Sacred Heart itself is a very good item. But like, if we didn't have the wisps and some of the other stuff we have right now, it really wouldn't have done much to save our run because our fire rate got lowered so much that it's, it's kind of not really hitting the mark. It's a real shame. But yeah, it's not not really doing all that it could be because our actual damage output our dps our damage is good but our dps isn't which yeah bit of a shame but we get through it eventually i don't think we make boss rush here i think we're a little bit past that in terms of time we're taking our sweet time here but we do get an angel deal i don't actually remember what we get in here um oh job's family okay job's family ain't bad we get another heart there which is awesome um, although I say that we'll be respawning as the lost here, so it's not that useful. And then, uh, at this point, I realize that, um, I need to be careful about how I use the sack room here, because I've got more hearts than it's required to get the maximum payout from the sack room, and if I go to the maximum payout, I'll end up teleporting to the dark room, and I don't want that. So I have to find somewhere to hurt myself. Uh, to lower my HP to the right level to kill myself on the sacrifice room, sacrifice room spikes without it being super pointless. I end up using this room here, the skulls, to bomb myself and potentially get some extra rewards. And then I try to use this guy to hit me, but he just keeps hitting my wisps. <laughs> it's, it's like absolutely pointless. So I lose a few wisps that I probably didn't have to lose. I end up walking into him to try and take damage and it doesn't really work for me. But yeah, at this point, I just... Bomb myself a few times more. Do I? I might use that full card. I can't remember. Not full card. Tower card. But I was looking to get to seven and a half hearts. Or seven hearts, I think, exactly. So now I'm at seven hearts. Um, or six and a half. And that puts me at a good point to get the maximum payout reward I'd want without triggering the angel spawns and then the mega certain um, teleport. Or lamb teleport, should I say. So now we're killing ourselves, and you'll be surprised by something here, something that confused me deeply. <laughs> I was so confused. So I, I teleport to the angel room, unfortunately, here. We didn't need that, but we come back here. We do the last thing to kill ourselves, and I respawn, and there you go. You have unlocked the lost. And then I respawned as myself, and I was like, excuse me, and it's because we had that grave item from before. Um, and we get this little angel buddy, and we get Job's rags, which is fire rate for the start of the floor, which is really, really nice. And I was like, do you know what? I've unlocked the lost, but I still have the poster. So at this point, I was actually, um, I was actually at this point thinking, hey, wait a minute. Maybe I could do the beast as the lost. What if... I went and did the beast as the lost and went and unlocked tainted lost. Hold on a minute. Wait a minute. We have a plan here. I was like, oh, we're at the floor that allows us to do this. So I'm like, hey, let's redo this floor and then try and get a little more power because now, like I was sort of thinking now the wisps are useful, but they're not as necessary. We'd rather try and get an extra item that that bolsters our power a little more. And something that's very annoying here. So you'll see that we've got this little Isaac-based wisp here. And we've got this little angel buddy. 
The Isaac May Swift can't die this floor, which is fine. But later on, it like starts spawning troll bombs. I don't know if it's that Wisp or another one, but I start getting a fuckload of troll bombs spawned on me and it's very confusing and it's very scary. And of course, this, this is now my first time playing as the Lost on this save file. Um, and certainly was concerning. Obviously, I had the Holy Mantle at this point, so I was feeling a little more confident. Do I, do I see that Tinted Rock? I do, good. Um, I was feeling a little more confident. We get small rock there, which is really nice for that slight, slight fire rate increase as well. Um, and of course, the damage up as well. So, yeah, with Holy Mantle, I was feeling reasonably confident, at least on this floor. Now, the Ascent is, of course, a bit of a different beast because we have to do Gehenna. This room here scared me quite a lot because this is basically a Pac-Man room and I had no idea what was going on. Uh, and for some reason, my dumbass didn't see that blue key there, and I decided to navigate all the way back around, and all the way back around again. It was just kind of stupid. I could have just literally used that blue key on the door. We get the box there, which of course isn't very useful. We get a bunch of cards here. It says that the, it was the Lost versus Ultra Breed, and just didn't spawn Ultra Breed. Not quite sure what that was about. Our item room here is unfortunately hot trash. Clutch's Curse isn't something that... I will not take ever as the lost because it's going to get us hurt. One last check to see if we can get Flechette. We did end up getting the stolen placard, which is, of course, potentially quite useful. And I quickly check out what the Wisps do with Mum's Brace, but it unfortunately doesn't really work well with what we've got going on. And I think, do you know what? Actually, we've got a three room charge Book of Virtues here. The Book of Virtues Wisps themselves are pretty good. Let's just go for it. Let's just take that and roll with it. So I end up just sticking with the book for now. And if we get another active, like in Gehenna or whatnot, then we can, could take it. Unfortunately, the items here, the on damage stuff, so doesn't really help us. But that's our first placard. With four luck, the placard has a reasonable chance of pro procking. That is if it's based on luck. I'm not actually sure that it is. But we, we, I take a look at those chests, and before I can even register what's in them, the game's like, no, 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 no. I will bomb these for you. And at this point, I actually realized that um, I don't actually have any need to do mo the mother fight again, apart from if I wanted to like get another negative. But I was like, do you know what? Honestly, at this point, the risk that would be like the mum fight as, as the lost just isn't worth it. I already have a Polaroid to trade in at the door. So now that I've seen everything I need to see, it's just get, get the hell out of here and get on the ascent. So I make my way over back towards the door and I keep forgetting I can't fly over these blue blocks. It'd be nice to see an item that lets you fly over those or like destroy them or something. Because they are in quite a lot of rooms and they can be kind of frustrating. But anyways, we uh, we try and find our original room, which for some reason I think is up there when it's clearly not. And it's just here. And we actually head onto the ascent. And at the minute, obviously, we're just hoping for the best. I, I At this point, I'm not even really looking for a... Um, I'm not even really looking for a beast kill. Um, yeah, I'm going to say I'm not even really looking for a beast kill, but I'm just trying to get what I can. Also, this room freaked me the hell out. I was shitting myself in this room because there's just, there's, there's like saw blades going everywhere. There's enemies that I don't recognize. And my little baby's doing some wacky stuff. There's these big, massive, like, fat boys in the sky. I was... I was scared for my life. I had no idea what was happening in that room. And I just, my brain couldn't comprehend. Uh, and I, obviously I, I lost my mantle. And I was like, no, 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 no. Please, no. Please, no, don't do this to me. But you can see actually on my fire rate there, the Job's Rags giving us a massive fire rate boost for the start of the floor. This actually plays fairly and a fairly important role in the Ascent. Because obviously once we get onto the Ascent, excuse me, buddy. Once we get onto the Ascent, um, we, uh, the floors, are, the floors are quite short, so we keep this fire rate bonus for the majority of every floor. Uh, of course, when we get round to the beast and the ascent, uh, after the ascent, sorry, it doesn't really play as big of a role, but right now, and for the beast fight, it makes a big difference considering our fire rate was so low, it gives us quite a bit more DPS. Obviously, it does slowly fade. Here, I was like, shall I maybe take the store whistle? And I decide, it's potential... For more items so i'm gonna give it a go um and unfortunately the first one we use we get no item available that just is what it is um but i was like i'd be getting less wisps if i did this but at the same time 
I would be um, potentially getting more items. What's worth more? I see this here, the wooden horn, and I'm like for 0.5 damage, I know that would get boosted by a damage multiplier. I still wasn't too tempted to do two Gehenna bosses for that because it could just be very terrible. <laughs> could be quite scary. Um, we unlock the black hole for de defeating 20 portals, which I really wasn't expecting. At this point, I'm trying to keep a few keys sort of backlogged, ready to go, so that I can uh, use my store whistle whenever it's ready, because obviously it requires a key to open them as well as charging it. And we get a very weird colored portal there. And here's our item room. And this is difficult. We can get a massive fire rate up, or we can get pride pin. I end up taking pride pin, but I I think it was a mistake. I'll be honest, I think later on in the run, I would have been I would have much preferred having taken odd mushroom. So it's like Pride Pin I took because it's just a lot of tier effects. But the thing is, when your fire rate is slow, you don't really get to experience those tier effects as much. Now, there is a few of them, like this one that turns enemies into poop, that is incredibly useful, especially when it comes to the Ascent. You'll see a few times I actually managed to, um, I actually managed to kill some of those big tainted enemies that normally have a lot of HP in a single hit by just turning them into poop. It made things really easy. Um, but... Still, I think the fire rate in the, the like, later on, like, um, would have been probably better. But let's, uh, let's move on down to the actual ascent now. Now, I do have 13 bombs, and as you guys know, I like to bomb my way through doors. So, I was very, very much contemplating, um, my avenue to success here. And my main avenue to success, realistically, was, obviously, if I can kill everything with a massive fire rate bonus, that's great. But otherwise, I need to be bombing out of doors as soon as humanly possible in every situation I possibly can. And so any room that I think I could lose my mantle in, I'll be trying to bomb my way out of because that's just the best way forward. Go into this room to use placard. And I see the model rocket, which is very interesting because shot speed isn't good for homing. But the bonus damage based on move speed I was very interested in. And the homing that you gain is, is a particularly strong form of homing. So I was like, Do you know what? Maybe this could be quite good. Maybe the model rocket here could be interesting. And I think it actually paid out. I think it's one of the, one of those items that you wouldn't really expect it to work too well with Sacred Heart. But it worked reasonably well. It did it did a pretty good job. It did a pretty good job. Um, and now we're obviously looking for our cracked key. Which I believe was on like floor 3. On like the caves 1 or something. Um, and yeah you'll see that it does a pretty good job. It doesn't accelerate the shots to too high a degree. Um, they still hum all right. They still adopt all of our tier effects as normal. That's good stuff. And I remembered that these guys brimstone, so I got the hell out of the way of them and kind of let them do their own thing. And we get one of these again. Unfortunately, just sharp straw and to the next floor. And as you'll see, if you look at my fire rate, the bonus resets. Of course, it fades so slowly that we keep it for the majority of the floor anyways. But it's nice that it resets every floor here. And at this point, we are out of both money and keys, so our store key thing becomes a little less useful. Of course, I can still use it to generate wisps if I want to, but it, it itself really doesn't have like the oomph that it kind of used to have for us, so I don't end up using it so much. I do grab this key in case I get the money again when we move forward, and I think I use it in this room here and get a blood clot, right? Yeah, but I can't afford blood clot, so... I have to hold off until I get my money. And then this is where things really start to get kind of sketchy for me. Uh, these are the sort of rooms that I want to bomb out of. But there's so many like enemies between me and the door. That I just decided to keep my distance and kill the enemies. Um, I thought that would be best. And it kind of worked out. But these guys are a little tricky. Luckily I can kind of fire at them from an off angle. Um, because uh, I have that herming. I don't have to be directly in front of them. So enemies like that aren't quite as risky. But still not what I want to see. Enemies like this, really awful as well. Should have taken that key, my bad. And then guys like this, you want to stand near the door, so as soon as they do their on death effect, you can just get out of the room and skedaddle. So as soon as this guy dies, we bail out of the room. Again, should have taken the golden key there, but my bad. And then we come back in, and the same thing again here. We stay near the door, we get that teeth shot for the five time shots, pretty incredible there. And we walk out, walk back in to delete all the tears. Pretty standard practice. Um, this is the floor with my cracked key. Caves one. Good, good. 
So we've got that ready. Now, now the stress really starts to sort of set in. This is really where I start to realize that, hey, you are pretty darn close. You are pretty darn close to being able to unlock the Tainted Lost and Lost in a single run, which I'm not going to say it's the first time it's ever happened, but I can't imagine many people have ever done this before. I can't imagine this is something that many people have ever done. So I was pretty hyped to try and get this done. I was very, very stressed out. In fact, my commentary here, by the way, this item here, very good. I was really hoping to get that. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, this, um, I was I was getting quite stressed. And the commentary here that I'm doing in post is probably actually a lot better than the commentary you would have heard during the actual run. Because I was so focused on not dying that my commentary was probably pretty, pretty lacking. Because I was so heavily focused. So now... You might be getting slightly more engaged commentary than I normally would. And here I get a red chest to an angel deal and get circle of protection, which is pretty darn good. I really like circle of protection here, so I'm very happy with that. This is my first room that I'm immediately like, hey, let me the fuck out. We got a bunch of those jumpy boys and kingpin. I was like, I'm sorry to that trophy item, but there is literally no way that I head back through that room now. That is not happening in a million billion years. No Heckin' way. <laughs> and then that guy, I turned the fly that stomps poops into poop, which I find pretty funny. And now, basement one and uh, basement two left. Again, here, the tainted enemies turn into poop. Goddamn, it stops them from spawning any minions, doing any on-death effects, and it kills them instantly. It's very valuable. <laughs> These electric ones are also really good, too. This guy can be kind of annoying here with the ghost, so it's good to kill him quickly. We'll take the key again so we can use uh, our active. No, we won't. I just ignored it. <laughs> Turtle, what are you doing? But yeah, it's all about just sort of keeping our distance, using our incredible um, shot speed slash range combination to do this. And we're on to the last floor here, which luckily doesn't end up having too many difficult enemies, if I remember correctly. It's not too bad. Fortunately, I spawned a bunch of accidental spiders here. But yeah, normally this floor is the, like, got the most tinted enemies of any floor. But I think we got kind of lucky here in the fact that we got very few. Um, and we get the teeth shot when it's relevant and stuff like that. And we just head through. I do check what this is, but it's just fucking Butterbean. <laughs> Thanks, game, for Butterbean there. And there you go. We have made it. We have officially unlocked Tainted Lost and the Lost in a single run, which honestly... I was unbelievably hype about. Unbelievably hype. It, like, this is why I'm so upset that I lost the audio uh, for this episode, because it was just awe. I was in awe at how just cool this was. And I have had to take basically an extra hour out of my day to re-record this audio for you guys. Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys appreciate the extra effort, because... I was very annoyed. I wasted three hours of my time yesterday, an hour to record this, and then two more videos following. All of them had to be scrapped. And now I've had to waste an extra hour of my... I won't say waste, but now I've had to use an extra hour of my time in order to, um... in order to re-record the audio for this episode, because it's an episode that I really wanted you guys to see. Um, but you can see, at this point, is where the troll bombs start. This little wisp, whatever it is that I have, it just starts spawning troll bombs all over the place. And it seems to be from Mum's bottle of pills. And I have no idea, like, why. It's so frustrating, but there's, like, troll bombs popping out all over the place. And now, they are doing good damage, but they, uh, they're all over the place. And, of course, I lose my holy mantle here. At this point, I'm very, very scared, especially if he does his spinny. And what does he do? Oh, uh, he does the spinny. So, at this point, especially for the troll bombs, I'm especially worried um, and of course, it spawns one right on me there. Circle of protection is helping out a little bit with uh, getting rid of a few of these shots here and there. But I'm I'm in sort of panic mode right now. I realise that, that killing the beast here isn't super super likely, but I'm like I'd at least like to get there. And we don't know how likely that is with this setup. But we throw a few bombs in there if we can. We see what we can do. The last bomb gets us the kill nice and quickly. And we move on to the actual beast fight itself, which is certainly a little easier than the dogma fight. But I always find the um, the last horseman to be the most difficult in terms of the lost. 
uh, him and war. This guy, kind of a pushover. You can see, though, unfortunately, my fire rate has not reset because this is not a new floor. So my fire rate has kind of gotten to the point of being quite slow again, um, and it's a little bit useless, unfortunately. Um, so we're really seeing kind of a downfall in my DPS now. And it's not it's not terrible, don't, don't get me wrong. Like, our DPS is still fine, but it could just be a whole lot better. But we're just trying to do what we can with killing these guys. I actually start trying to use the troll bombs that are spawning randomly on purpose to deal some damage, which is certainly risky, um, I realize. But I thought, you know what? Throw a bit of extra DPS in there. Um, maybe it'll help us out. But of course, in this situation, we've regained our Holy Mantle. So I was slightly reinvigorated in our chances, especially after killing this guy so quick and getting teeth shot to start this guy out. Pestilence here. Doing his job, doing his thing. I kind of whiff this a little bit because uh, I let the poison kind of overtake me and ruin my positioning here, which obviously isn't great. But we'll see what we can do with it. Move forward a little bit and move out the way of the poison. And yeah, you can see I just kind of ruined half the stage with poison there. But we get him into second phase pretty easily. We have the fart shots and the poop shots going on to do good damage. And you can see, even with our lower fire rate right now, the damage we output is pretty incredible. Like, we are killing this guy very, very quickly. We take him out, and we're on to war now. War's really where, where things start to get a little sketchy. I I definitely think he's quite difficult. We get a few Linger Beans there to hopefully do some damage. But yeah, he's got a few attacks that I find really difficult, especially like the ones where he dashes towards you. The bombs themselves can be a little tricky as well, depending on how he throws them. Uh, they're pretty easy to dodge for the most part, but I have had him a few times throw a bomb and it hit me directly and it deals contact damage. And then he did this attack, which I really don't like. <laughs> this attack I find kind of annoying, but luckily I ended it midway through by entering him into a second phase. And his second phase is kind of annoying. We do manage to drop a bomb on him there, which is kind of nice. And we actually managed to drop another troll bomb on him there as well. Even better damage there. And at this point, we're just, yeah, we're just hoping for the best. Hoping for what we can get and seeing seeing if we can be successful. And we kill War. And now we're on to the guy that I find really tricky is the Lost. And I basically whiff completely. I try to bomb him and it spawns a scythe on me and I lose my Holy Mantle. And in trying to get through the gap, I hit myself. And unfortunately, I perish. But there you go. That was the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this post-game commentary regardless of losing the live commentary. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one.